Hello, lovely internet strangers. I'm in my corner once again, this time to talk to you about the VMAs, specifically the Latin category at the VMAs. I figured since Latinx Heritage Month is just about over, not sure if I'll be posting this on the last day, October 15th or the day after, but I realized I had not posted any Latinx content during this very important month. And so I had a few ideas, but this was the one that I chose because I love music and I love Latin music and I figured when else am I gonna get to talk about Latin music on this channel because it doesn't quite fit the general slate of things I tend to talk about on this channel but I saw an opening and I'm going for it so I'm just basically gonna describe what the controversy is and then I'm gonna give some background on the VMAs and Latin music and things like that and my general opinions about this whole situation okay before I go any further for anyone who is not subscribed to my channel and doesn't know this about me. I am Latina. I have a Puerto Rican father and you can see prominently displayed my Puerto Rican trinkets, maracas, and a fan straight from the island. I didn't even put them there for the sake of this video. They just live on my bookshelf full time. So everything I'm going to say comes from having a Puerto Rican parent, Puerto Rican extended family, growing up loving music, growing up loving Latin music of various kinds, being a music nerd, and knowing a lot about the topic. Topic. So nobody come at me being like, this chick can't speak, she's not Latina. Yes, yes I am. So I came across this VMA's Latin controversy through the AV Club because I still read the AV Club. When I say read, I mean I have the AV Club as one of my feeds. I scroll through once a week, look for relevant headlines because I still like TV and movies and things. Most of the things that come out nowadays are not of interest to me, but I still try to pay attention on the off chance that there is something interesting and because I have this channel and sometimes I want to talk about things that are culturally relevant of the moment. So I saw this article. It was posted on September 13th, 2021. The headline is, the VMA has again proved that Latin is a flawed classification in award shows. With the subheadline, MTV awarding two non-Latinas in the best Latin category is further proof that the Latin categories need to be reworked. All right, so let me tell you what this person is complaining about. The article author writes, in a move that makes absolutely no sense, MTV awarded Best Latin to two non-Latin people in the category, Billie Eilish and Rosalia, for their collaborative song, Lo Vas a Olvidar. Thankfully, MTV saved us the deep secondhand embarrassment of Eilish having to accept the award over major Latin stars like Bad Bunny and Jay Balvin, since the win wasn't part of the televised ceremony. But it's still shocking that the track was included in the category. If you're struggling to find the issue with it. Allow us to explain. Yes, person who has no idea what they're talking about, please explain this to me. What's the issue with the best Latin VMA? Rosalia is not a Latin artist. She's Spanish. That means she's Hispanic because she comes from a Castilian speaking country, but she's not Latina in any shape or form. Bad Rosalia, how dare you not be Latina. Her music takes influences from trap and reggaeton, and she's also constantly collaborating with Latin artists. Her music takes influences from trap and reggaeton, and she's also constantly constantly collaborating with Latin artists. By awarding both Eilish and Rosalia, the message is clear. The VMAs is still up to its bullshit of not properly recognizing people of color. It's already a struggle for Latin artists to receive awards in non-Latin award shows, with Bad Bunny receiving his first Gringo Grammy this year for Best Latin Pop or Urban Album with his 2020 record, something that I don't know how to read. It is a bunch of letters. Y-H-L-Q-M-D-L-G? I don't know. So awarding non-Latinx artists in a Latin category shows us how little importance is given to Latin megastars. It's evident that Rosalia keeps being included in the category because awards voters seemingly don't know how to properly classify genre-bending Hispanic music. With pop songs that take on flamenco and trap influences, award shows keep lumping Rosalia with the rest of the Latin trap stars because there isn't a specific relegation for the genre. Rosalia was nominated for Top Latin Female Artist at the 2021 Billboard Music Awards, Favorite Female Artist Latin at the 2020 American Music Awards, and Best New Pop Urban Latin Artist at the 2019 Latin American Music Awards. Her album, El Mal Querer, also won a Grammy for Best Latin Rock, Urban, or Alternative Album in 2020. She's also routinely nominated at the Latin Grammys. As Lucas Villa wrote in the AV Club, re-examination of the term Latin to describe 
described Spanish artists was reignited with the success of Rosalia, who won the Grammy for Album of the Year last year. Only the second woman to win that award after Colombian pop star Shakira in 2006. That's been another kind of representation battle. Women, always being kept down, am I right? Latin is also a label the media bestowed upon Spanish superstar Enrique Iglesias and his rise to the top. Last year, Billboard doubled down in classifying music recorded in Spanish as Latin music when it came to Rosalia. It's frustrating for us Latinx to see this happen repeatedly. Ah uh, yes, tell me of your struggles. But it's also because there's not a better category for Hispanic artists who make music within the reggaeton and trap realm. Rap and pop aren't a proper fit for them either. The VMAs introduced a K-pop category in 2019, and though it's questionable to say the least that these groups aren't being recognized in pop categories, it's at least a far more specific classification than Latin. It goes to show that when it comes to recognizing music that isn't made by native English speakers, award ceremonies still have a long way to go. Instead of continuously awarding a non-Latin artist for Latin awards, it's time to rework categories to be more inclusive of Hispanic-based genres and give Latin artists the proper accolades they deserve. It's shameful that it's 2021 and award ceremonies are still lumping together anyone who sings in Spanish as Latin. We need award shows to recognize that Latin isn't really a genre, just a categorization for music made by people who are Latinx, and an extremely outdated one at that. Where do I even begin? First, let's talk about what the VMAs are. For those of you who don't know, that stands for the Video Music Awards. The awards are given out by MTV. It started back in the 80s. So the awards aren't even technically for artistry in the music. What's being voted on is videos, artistry in the videos, but also these awards are fan voted. Anyone can vote, except for I think they have a few awards that are pro awards, like regarding film editing and things like that. And I honestly don't know who even votes in the VMAs. I assume the demographic is mostly women. Can't I have ever met a man who would spend his time casting a vote for the VMAs? I'm sure they exist. I just imagine that the demographic generally skews female. And I would also guess that the demographic generally skews young because those are the people generally paying close attention to music videos and MTV in general. So there's probably a high percentage of young women voting. Now there's two pieces here. The article author is getting mad at the ignorance of the voters, but also we should remember that the videos that they are choosing from to vote on have been decided upon by MTV. There's no information that I could find about MTV's selection process for these nominees, it's very secret. So the article author has a problem with the fact that the best Latin category was won by two non-Latinas. I don't have any problem with that if this is a category for music videos that feature Latin music because Latin music doesn't have to be made by Latinas. I'm gonna circle back to that in a second, but the more important issue, my problem with the win, to the extent that I even care, is that the song that won is not a Latin song. It is not Latin music. It is a song that is sung in Spanish, but the music, is not Latin. And I know that's hard for some people to process that you can sing in Spanish and the music is not Latin, but it's true. Or that you could make Latin music and the people making it are not Latino. That can also be true. And you can make Latin music that is sung in English. I'm going to paraphrase from Wikipedia here just for simplicity's sake, but Latin music is a term used by the music industry as a catch-all genre for various styles of music from Latin America, Spain, Portugal, and the United States inspired by older Latin American and Iberian music genres, as well as music sung in Spanish or Portuguese language. So the term Latin music pretty much sprung up in the 40s when music that was being made by Latinos was becoming really popular during wartime because Latin America was largely untouched by the war in the same way that other countries were. And Latin music encompasses all kinds of rhythms and sounds, etc. And yes, it has been traditionally made by people from Latin American countries, Latino immigrants, the US, American-born Latinos, etc. because that's where the music originated. But anyone can make music with Latin instruments, Latin rhythms, Latin influences. And you can be Latino and just make music that does not have any Latin influences whatsoever, whether you're singing in Spanish or English. So interestingly, the category for Best Latin at the VMAs has changed over time. Originally, it was only given out in Los Premios MTV Latino America, so it wasn't even in their 
their regular English ceremony. And that took place from 2006 to 2009. And then in 2010, the regular MTV Video Music Awards added the Tres Latino Artist of the Year. And then it says there was no award given out between 2014 and 2017. And then it seems like they rebranded it as the MTV Video Music Award for Best Latin. Now, I would assume that they made the change, although I can't be sure because I'm not a mind reader, because they wanted to feature music videos with Latin music rather than music videos just with artists that were also Latin. Because at this point in 2018, when they're rebranding it, Latinos are everywhere and they are continually genre crossing or making non-Latin music more and more and more. So if they want to retain a category for videos that are featuring music with Latin rhythms, then I'd assume that was how they were trying to do it. If this had happened when the award was still the Latino artist of the year, then yeah, it wouldn't make any sense because neither of them are Latino, but it's not. It's the category for best Latin. Now, I actually have my own theory as to why this video won because I went and watched all the videos that were nominated because I always like to do at least a little bit of research, even for these A Square Corner videos. And the video that won, the Billie Eilish and Rosalia video, had only 62 million views compared to the hundreds and hundreds of millions of views from all the other videos. I think Pichota had the greatest number of views. It was like 800 something million views. But after watching all the videos and knowing that the VMAs are voted on by random people, and you can vote up to 10 times a day per person, I believe. And with my hypothesis that most of the voting demographics skews young and female, I kind of imagine that the video won because of its content. Because all the other videos, besides maybe the collaboration that Dua Lipa did, they were pretty traditionally Latin American in their content, in that they had women being sexualized in some way. Women in bikinis, camera focus on butts. Even in Carol G's video for Bichota, which is like this female empowerment song, it still features a lot of sexualized dancing and kind of like a sexualization of the female form. And just knowing what I've kind of started to hear about the younger generation of women kind of pushing back against this sex positivity movement. I kind of wonder if they chose the Billie Eilish and Rosalia video because that video is just this weird kind of artsy thing where it's just the two of them and neither of them are wearing outfits that sexualize their bodies in any way. Anyone who's familiar with Billie Eilish will know that she's known for wearing very non-traditionally feminine clothing, oversized clothing that hides her body, and she's kind of an idol for young girls because of that. So I kind of feel like that could have been part of it. And also it could have just been, this is the main VMAs. This is not like the Latin VMAs. So the young female demographic that's voting may not be that into Latin music. I mean, there's a decent amount of Latin music that makes it onto the main charts. You know, if you're on Spotify looking at New Music Friday, or you're looking at the top 50 US, you're going to see Latin stuff on there. But the voting demographic may not have been as familiar with Carol G, for example, versus Billie Eilish, they might be like huge fans of her. I don't even know how the voters vote. Do they actually vote based on this is my favorite video or do they just do it based on this is their favorite artist? Who knows? I don't think anyone has asked them. They can vote any way they want. So like when I read an article like this, I'm like, even if I agree with you, like which to some extent, I don't totally disagree with them in the fact that I'm like, why was this pick for the Latin category at all? Because it's not Latin music. It's just music sung in Spanish. But like, what should be done about it? I mean, the VMAs are a joke. People don't really pay attention to them anymore because nobody needs to watch MTV to watch music videos. You just go on YouTube. There it is. Watch it anytime you want. Award ceremonies in general, viewership is consistently down. I feel like music journalists like this one care the most about things like the VMAs. And I definitely don't support the kind of change that they would want to see, which is to just have a category where we feature Latino artists. Generally, these awards have been given out based on the genre of music, which is getting harder and harder to do because so many people are genre crossing. You know, what even is pop anymore versus rock versus hip hop when everyone is blending elements of all of them? I guess we've done things like best female artist or best male artist, but that's always been to kind of split the playing field so you can acknowledge the male artists and the female artists because there's so many artists 
this and then you don't get the complaints about like well you never honor any you know female artists it's just gender skewed if this person wants a category that just features latino artists like okay but why like if i was a professional musician i wouldn't want to be nominated in the latino category i just want to be in the regular categories for my music i have a whole list of just r&b that's made by latinos it's not latin music there is r&b that can be latin influence but this is r&b that has no latin influences sometimes they sing in spanish sometimes they don't sometimes they're just latinos who are singing r&b in english just being latino while they do it this is common you know you know, this author makes this comment about how the VMAs isn't honoring people of color or they're not paying enough attention to non-English language music. Why do they have any obligation to do that? If the fans actually care, they'll make a stink. And obviously MTV added a K-pop category to the VMAs. So they probably were listening to some sort of feedback from viewership. But the world of music is so vast and the world of Latin music is like its own thing. This is why they have the Latin Grammys. If you go to the Latin Grammys website and look at the list of categories and the nominees, if you look at that page, you will be scrolling for a while because there are a lot of categories because there's all different kinds of Latin music. There's Latin pop, Latin rock, urban, salsa, tropical, regional, reggaeton, like everything you can imagine. There are people who love listening to bachata music and dancing to bachata, but then there are other people who love Latin music, but they hate bachata. Salsa is fine, but bachata no. And my dad enjoys Latin music, salsa in particular. Hello, Puerto Rican, but he hates reggaeton. When reggaeton started to get big, he was like, this is an abuse of the Spanish language. This is a disgrace to Latin music. He hated it. So there is something for everyone in Latin music. It is so diverse because Latin music was made by people from all these different countries, all these different territories, and people don't realize in general how much diversity there is in Latin America, and they definitely don't realize it when it comes to Latin music. But another important point I want to make, because this article author discounts Rosalia, oh, she's Spanish, she's Hispanic, but she's not Latina. So, you know, she doesn't fit into this Latin category. Now I guess we could say this person is just confused because they think the award is supposed to be for Latinos, but I think it's like a weird conflation of Latinos with Latin music, like pigeonholing them there. And also not really understanding what Latin music is, because what are Latinos? Latinos are a mixture of the indigenous people in the countries where they come from and the Spanish and sometimes Portuguese conquistadors. So literally, why is a lot of Latin music in Spanish? because Latinos speak Spanish. Why do they speak Spanish? Because of the Spanish conquistadors. The conquistadors brought their language. They brought their music. Spanish guitar. That is a heavy influence in a lot of Latin music. I could probably make people take a test who think they know what Latin music is, and I could play them some Latin music from Latin America, and I could play them some music from Spain, and they probably would not be able to tell the difference because it all depends what kind of Latin music you're even talking about. That's why I think the Latin Grammys is like really cool because there is so much Latin music. If you just try to let them compete with like the regular awards, they'd probably never get highlighted because people always say, oh, well, the Latin Grammys are the separate thing and that's bad, you know, because they're not being honored in the main awards, whatever. Whereas I see it as, wow, look at how much Latin music there is. We can make an entire separate award ceremony with a lot of categories with a lot of nominees. Like Latin American culture, especially music, whether we're talking about people who actually live in those countries or people that live here, it's like a whole separate thing. You know, it's like this whole other world that people don't always know anything about. And this article author does not know what the heck they're talking about. So I just wanted to throw out some ranty kind of thoughts, illuminate some of the nuances to this for people who maybe kind of heard of it and and just kind of scrolled by, didn't really know what was going on, or for people who've never heard of any of this. And I'm gonna link a Spotify playlist that I made. I know some of us hate Spotify, but I made a playlist of Latin music from the last few years. So if you wanna take a listen to that, you can take a listen. And I also have a playlist of Spanish language music that is not Latin. So you can check that out too if 
if you want. Latin music is not for everyone. Not everyone can appreciate its rhythms. Not everyone can appreciate the pure joy that can only be experienced when blasting Latin freestyle. But I could do a whole video series just talking about different subgenres of Latin music, but that is not really within the scope of this channel. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you want to verbally fight me, you think everything I said was wrong, please comment below, shoot me an email, send me a DM. Oh my god, I said shoot me an email. That's violent language, but that's the subject for another video. So I hope to hear from some of you. As always, if you have any suggestions for videos, also contact me, let me know. Just a reminder that I'm on Locals. I haven't been posting there lately just because my community there isn't that big right now, but it does exist and I'll try to post there more. Link is in the description and that's it for now. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe and I will have more content for you very soon.